right. So, right from diodes and tubes to transistors and then integration in electronics to smaller and smaller and smaller sizes to microprocessors which can have hundreds of thousands of small uh, transistors inside them. Okay. Here we are showing you a much bigger thing. You see this is a General Motors factory, General Motors. Even in 1994, for a lot of the precision welding, robots are being used, robots. Now these are completely electronically controlled, right? There is no human being inside there and so on. All the materials, all the engineering, all the manufacturing is going on by robots. So there is a huge thing. So this is not one machine. The whole factory is electronic in nature, right? So electronics can go from a very a small product to the whole thing like a factory electronics. And here of course, we are showing you lots of different uh, electronic chips, right? Uh, chips and transistors, the whole circuit boards, uh, these are uh, solar cells and so on. So in all of them, there is a lot of electronics involved. But the brilliant thing is that only two metals, silicon and germanium, and germanium only to a little extent majority 80 to 90 percent of all electronic transistors and circuit boards and these and chips are made of silicon right but there is about two times silicon in the earth as compared to iron so the future of engineering is safe there is no issue about material availability of electronic products there right another type of material which is not basic right electronic materials we were saying it is based on the application right the materials which are used in electronic industry now nano materials are not based on application even they are based based on the method of production how do you produce the material whether the material is a metal or a polymer or a ceramic the way you produce it right so here we are saying it is not a material type based on its nature, but characterized by processing, manufacturing process, right? You don't read below. If you like, you stop here, pause here and tell me what do you understand by the word nanotechnology? Nanotechnology. This is the most modern word around in the world of engineering for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years. What is, what do you think is nanotechnology? Tell me what is nano, just nano, no nanotechnology, just nano, what is it, right? It is just a scale, you know, right? In powers of 10, if you go up, 10 raised to 3 is 1000, 10 raised to 6 is million, 10 raised to 9 is billion, right? So you have mega and so on. But if you go 10 raised to minus 3, it is milli, 10 raised to minus 6 is what? micro 10 raised to minus 9 is what yes nano 10 raised to minus 9 is nano so 10 raised to minus 9 meter is a nanometer right 10 raised to minus 9 meter is a nanometer so nanotechnology now should be what now you understand that nano means 10 raised to minus 9 so what is nanotechnology? Yes, so if you have guessed, if you do any technology, any manufacturing, any engineering, which involves very, very small size, the size of a nanometer, the size of a nanometer, one billionth of a meter, you, you break a meter into a one billion pieces. So when you go to that small size in manufacturing or technology, then the whole technology is nanotechnology, right? Similarly, similarly, nanomaterials, nanomaterials are materials that are produced on the nano scale. You can have a metal, you could produce it normally. But now if you use nanotechnology to produce this material, meaning that during manufacturing, you will use particles of 10, 20, 30, 100, 200 nanometer size, nanometer size, then you will say this is a nanomaterial, right? So this is it. So, we are saying that nanotechnology designing and producing objects or structures at a very small scale, 100 nanometers or less. Nanomaterials, main product of nanotechnologies, 
नानो स्केल पार्टिकल्स ट्यूब्स रॉड्स फाइबर्स ए स्मॉलर देन हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर्स इन एटलीस्ट वन डायमेंशन राइट सो नानो टेक्नोलॉजी इज द इंजीनियरिंग वेयर वी प्रोड्यूस एट वेरी स्मॉल पार्टिकल साइज एंड नानो मटीरियल आर द मटीरियल दैट यू प्रोड्यूस बाई यूजिंग नानो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दे कुड बी एनी ऑफ द अर्लियर मटीरियल अ मेटल कैन बी प्रोड्यूस एज अ नानो मटीरियल अ पॉलिमर कैन बी प्रोड्यूस एज अ नानो मटीरियल Now, what is the most common use now? Healthcare, electronics, cosmetics, textiles, information technology, environmental protection. Almost everywhere we use nano materials now, but mostly in healthcare, and sometimes in electronics and so on. Now, properties of nano materials are not very well characterized. Well characterized. The problem is that when you produce a material by a standard method. then you exactly know how the properties will be but nano technology is brand new and at what size of nano were you using particles of 50 nanometers and then started making a product were you started using 100 nanometers and then started it the properties will change the properties will change when right when we go to the next chapter which we will start properties of materials i told you then we will see that there is a big relationship between the size of the particles and the property of the material if the size of the mat change material change is same material it is the same say same exactly same steel but if it is made of larger particles or if it is made of very small particles the properties will change right so we have already told you earlier when we were talking of metals that there is a technology called powder metallurgy powder metallurgy where we do not produce a component in a traditional way by casting or extrusion or forging but we crush the metal into very small fine powder and then from that powder we make so that is already that is not nano engineering those particles you can see but it is already very small particle size and nano is extremely small particle size so here we are showing you some huge nano technology shapes nano technology shapes this type of ball like a football but particles 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 nano size particles so when we do nano engineering nano technology using this as the basic shape then it is called a fullerene when we make these long tubes then nt nano tube nano tube so this is also a nano tube this is also a nano tube and so on so when you use a tube type right small 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 particles arranged in a tube form and this cnt is carbon nano tube carbon nano tube right and then if you make it a flat piece flat piece flat surface like this or this then it is called graphene so for you at this level if you know these words fullerene nano tube and graphene then these are the three basic geometry in which nano materials are used and nano technology is carried out right so we don't want to go more into this but this means that you will already be talking like a learned person in the field of modern materials if you can say that you see if you do nano technology or if you use nano materials produce nano materials then the three basic shapes in which you you do this type of technology is that the nano particles you arrange them in a spherical pattern called a fullerene or you arrange them in a cylindrical particle uh, cylindrical format shape called a nano tube or you do it in a flat sheet type where you call it graphene and then from these three types of materials you do your engineering of nano technology type here we are just showing you right that graphene based nano material with magnetic properties right the, this is very very strange it is called ferromagnetic graphene so now this is important we told you ferrous materials non ferrous materials and the main property of ferrous materials was that they can be given magnetism they can be changed into electromagnets and so on so now at the graphene level we are doing nano technology but even here we can make magnetized materials so this is huge then we can go forth and so forth here we are showing you carbon nanotube 
carbon nanotube giving you an example right so new nano material can allow electric vehicles you know in the last 10 15 years electric vehicles have really come up to travel farther the problem with electrical vehicles was that you have to charge them and say after riding 50 kilometers if the charge is finished then you have to recharge them so the problem used to be that they are very nice there is no emission of uh, carbon dioxide and so on but if they do not run for more than 50 kilometers in one charge then you have to have a lot of charging stations all over the city so they discovered this was discovered almost 20 years ago this is this is not new that using nano materials they can do something so that they don't have to be charged so often so rather than 50 kilometers they can go to 100 kilometers 200 kilometers 300 kilometers like in a normal petrol car right so a powdery nano material is used to extend the lifespan of lithium sulfur batteries which are used in electric vehicles could increase the driving range of electric so this has already happened by the time this slide was there about 10 years ago in your book and so on we are saying that this could increase the driving range now you already know that tesla and so on and all the other companies tesla is the main founder of electric vehicles it is a california based company in the us but once they developed their electric vehicles to a very long larger scale then all the other companies like honda and bmw and so on have also started going to electric vehicles now so now of course this nano material has been added to the lithium batteries that were used in electric cars and they have increased the life of the battery to much more twice and thrice and so on so this is one of the most modern uses of nanotechnology a new type of material again not based on the nature of the material but sort of where it will be used right application so just look at the word biomaterials don't read further stop for a moment pause and you think you tell me biomaterial bio of course is something biological so what is biomaterial is your finger made of a biomaterial are your bones made of biomaterials are your teeth made of biomaterials yes or no yes or no what is organic materials all the materials that are there in human and animal bodies and plants those are called organic materials so the material for my skin and my bone and my teeth and so on is basically organic material so what is bio material anybody right again don't read below you can always read below very quickly and you can answer me or not but if you challenge yourself then you are thinking and when you study anything with your mind open and thinking right challenging yourself then you understand much more so okay maybe some of you have answered correctly you see natural biological materials are not biomaterials natural biological materials are not biomaterials but if i introduce an artificial material which can be used inside my biology right i for example you go to your dentist a tooth was broken he builds up this tooth by an artificial material which is not inside my body but after he builds it up you cannot tell the difference between the normal tooth and the new engineered tooth so this new material which is used inside the human being so it is used like a biological material but it is artificial this is now a bio material